Okay, so hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about the EGR system. I would consider this as part of the last video I made, which was about the diesel throttle valve. So in this video, we'll talk about the EGR system and how the EGR valve works in conjunction with the diesel throttle valve. Okay, and in so doing, questions like how does the EGR work? What is it for? When does the EGR valve opens and closes? How does the EGR lower engine cylinder combustion temperature? Is it true that the EGR decrease engine power output? What are the advantages and disadvantages of the EGR? And do we need to blank or delete the EGR? And if so, what are the possible consequences? So in order for us to answer all these questions, we need to understand how the EGR functions. So bear with me because I will try to make this as comprehensive as possible, okay? Now most of you already know EGR stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation, meaning if this is your intake and this is your exhaust, another pipe from the exhaust is routed back into the intake. Hence, Exhaust Gas Recirculation or EGR. Now a lot of people question the idea behind it all. Why would you route the exhaust back into the intake? Because if you want your engine to perform better, you would want air or oxygen getting inside the intake and not carbon monoxide from the exhaust. That is why some people would consider this idea dumb and would even say this equivalent to eating your own manure. So it's no surprise that a lot of people are confused with the idea of it all and I do believe the very source of that confusion is from the term exhaust gas recirculation itself. People believe that majority of the exhaust gas is recirculated back into the intake and that is not entirely true okay as you can see that is the size of the exhaust manifold that channels majority of the exhaust gases straight out the tailpipe and this is only the size of the egr pipe that is routed back into the intake and most of the exhaust that comes out of here comes mostly only from cylinder number one okay from this point and out this pipe. So while it might be true that exhaust gases is routed back into the intake, it only takes a small portion of that exhaust gas, okay? Only a small portion. Which brings us to the question of why and what for. Now, like I've said earlier, the EGR system only takes a small portion of that exhaust gas to recirculate into the intake. So instead of just air, you now have air and a little bit of exhaust gas. The general idea being is that you dilute and lower the oxygen content inside the cylinder. And because you have a lower oxygen content, the fuel burns at a much lower temperature. Let me illustrate how it does that using this butane torch, okay? So this torch works by sucking in air through this vent as you release the lighter fluid. And if we look inside here, there's that piece intended to make the air and lighter fluid swirl inside, thus mixing the fuel-air mixture better. That is why when we light this up, we see that very hot blue flame coming out of this nozzle. If I cover this vent, you see air is no longer being sucked in. The flame now is getting that oxygen from this area. And because there is no pre-mixing of fuel and air, that is the result and that is not very hot. But if I'll release this, see, open the vent, we now see that very hot blue flame again. Now, as we all know, blue flame is hotter than either red or yellow flame. Now, imagine this is your engine and this is your intake and this is your exhaust gas. Now, watch what happens if we introduce that into the intake, okay? See? The color of the flame changes from blue to red. See that? So even if I use this lighter, see the color still change. Now, this is very hot, but still the color of the flame changed from blue to red, emitting a flame that is of lower temperature. And so essentially, that is how the EGR reduces the combustion temperature inside the cylinder. By mixing it with a little bit of exhaust gas, the oxygen content is reduced. Hence, 
it produces a much more lower combustion temperature and the byproduct is lower NOx or nitrogen oxide emission. That is why this 2.5 diesel engine without EGR, if I will let this idle for 20 minutes, the temperature of the gases out the tailpipe goes up to only 81 degrees Celsius. By contrast, this is an older also 2.5 diesel engine without an EGR. If I will also let this idle for 20 minutes, it yields a much higher temperature that goes up to 98 degrees Celsius. You see that? Now, in order to help reduce the temperature of the exhaust gas that gets routed into the intake, that exhaust gas is channeled through the cylinder head. So, as your coolant cools the cylinder head, it cools down the exhaust gas as well. And there are some models like this engine, instead of just having this pipe, they added an EGR cooler. Essentially, this is just a water jacket that is also connected to your cooling system. It's the same with this. This is an airliner made for this air compressor. As hot compressed air courses through here, coolant enters this water jacket, effectively cooling down the compressed air. So it's the same for this EGR cooler. Now, although it's called exhaust gas recirculation, you should know that exhaust gas is not okay is not recirculated at all times while the engine is running. Otherwise, your engine will perform poorly. Hence, the need to regulate the exhaust gas, which brings us to the EGR valve. And this is intended to open and close, regulating the flow of the exhaust gas into the intake. Now, like I've already discussed in this video, outlining all the differences between a gas and diesel engine, a diesel engine does not need a throttle valve, unlike a gas engine. But in order to maximize the flow of the EGR into the intake, that is why they also incorporated a throttle valve on a diesel engine, like I've already discussed in this video. In order to increase the flow of exhaust gas when the EGR valve opens, the intake throttle valve opening is reduced, limiting the flow of air from the intake, maximizing the flow of the EGR. And also with this design, by incorporating the EGR valve midstream in the intake passage, it further cools down the exhaust gas as it mixes with the fresh cool air. Which brings us to when does the EGR valve opens and closes. Now just as much as the combustion temperature is reduced, your engine power output is going to be reduced as well and we do not want that. Otherwise, like I've said, our engine will perform poorly. So the opening and closing of the EGR valve will vary and depend greatly on engine operating conditions. Meaning, it will depend whether your idling cruising or heavy accelerating. It will depend on the engine temperature whether the engine is hot or not. That is why all these components and sensors are all connected to the ECU or engine control unit or more colloquially referred to as the computer box. Now for simplicity purposes we'll just focus on the following, okay? You have the airflow sensor connected to the ECU. You have the MAP sensor or Manifold Absolute Pressure sensor. You have the ECT sensor or Engine Coolant Temperature sensor. You have the Throttle Valve Position sensor. You have the EGR Valve Position sensor. And you have the Accelerator Pedal Position sensor. And all these are all connected to the ECU. Now, because the EGR lowers the cylinder combustion temperature, there is no EGR flow during startup and on cold idle, otherwise it will take a much longer time for your engine to reach its operating temperature. So the EGR valve is closed and the diesel throttle valve is fully open. And it is only when the engine has reached its operating temperature as provided by the ECT or engine coolant temperature sensor that the ECU opens the EGR valve while reducing the opening of the intake valve. 
However, should you accelerate, especially during heavy acceleration, you want all the power you can get. Hence, as you step on the pedal, this will close and this will open, maximizing airflow while preventing the EGR flow. And then again, during warm idle or low speed or steady cruising, because there's no need for a lot of engine power, this will begin to open and this will slightly close, maximizing the flow of the EGR, reducing toxic emissions. So it's more or less the same for a gas engine, just a slight difference. Because like I've already discussed in this video, the throttle valve on a gas engine is almost always closed. On a diesel engine, the throttle valve is almost always open. So on a gas engine, as the engine reaches its operating temperature, the EGR valve just opens. But should you accelerate, the throttle valve will open simultaneously closing the EGR valve. Okay, see that? Something like that. So on a diesel engine, as the engine reaches its operating temperature, this EGR valve will open and this will slightly close. And as you can see, they now look very similar. And similarly, should you accelerate, this will open and this will simultaneously close. See that? Something like that. Now, how I wish I can show you all that in actual operation, but unfortunately I can't do that because I don't have an OBD or onboard diagnostic scanner. But basically, should you plug an OBD scanner, you should see the percentage value of the opening and closing of the EGR valve in connection with the throttle valve, okay? As you can see, as provided by this engine manual regarding the position of the throttle valve, during ignition and cold idle, the valve is fully open plus or minus 5%. Now, this 5% is because of the valve itself, okay? So, during warm idle, it should close up to 55 to 90%. And during heavy acceleration, the throttle valve should fully open again, plus or minus 5%. So, we cannot just remove this and see the valve operate like I've shown in this video. Because as soon as we take this out, that takes the airflow sensor and the MAP sensor out of the equation, which should be computed by the ECU. Which brings us now to the next question. So the answer is yes and also no. Like I've already said, there is no EGR flow during startup and on cold idle in order for the engine to reach its operating temperature quickly and also during heavy acceleration because the engine needs all the power it can get. So there is EGR flow only during warm idle, low speed and steady cruising because there's no need for a lot of power. This is basically a win-win situation between protecting the environment by reducing toxic emissions without actually sacrificing engine performance. So the common belief that the EGR decreases engine performance is false. In fact, this engine with an EGR will outperform this engine without an EGR. Maybe one of these days I will make a video as to the differences between the two. They are both 2.5 diesel engine, but this engine will outperform this engine any time of the day with regard to speed, power, and fuel consumption. So, are you still there? I hope you're not bored. We are almost done, okay? Now, aside from reducing toxic emission to protect the environment, the advantage of the EGR is, one, it can reduce engine knocking, and two, it can improve fuel economy by getting rid of pumping losses. Now, engine knocking briefly is a situation wherein a secondary explosion happens elsewhere inside the cylinder. Meaning, aside from the initial combustion that should start here as the spark plug ignites or as diesel is introduced inside the cylinder of a diesel engine, there is a secondary explosion that happens elsewhere inside the cylinder. And this is more common to occur during idle when the temperature of the cylinder becomes too hot. Now, because the EGR, like I've said earlier, reduces engine combustion temperature, 
the temperature inside the cylinder doesn't get too hot hence it gets rid of engine knocking number two advantage is by improving fuel economy by getting rid of pumping losses now i will just illustrate to you what pumping loss is imagine this is your piston and this is your cylinder and this is your intake so if that is open as we pull on this plunger we can do that easily see and if we close that see there is resistance and the plunger wants to come up again because there is a high vacuum created see and this is more evident on a gas engine because during idle the throttle valve is only slightly open creating resistance and that is what you call as pumping losses therefore the engine has to work harder in order to overcome that resistance but because of the egr you essentially created another opening getting rid of that resistance and because of that the engine works more efficiently consuming less fuel but the disadvantage is the egr has the tendency to produce a lot of carbon buildup on the intake side of the engine and if that carbon buildup would cause the egr valve to get stuck in the open position that would greatly affect the performance of your engine maybe one of these days i can try to show you how to clean the egr valve okay which brings us to our last and final topic now there are two main reasons why people choose to blank or delete the egr one is the belief that it reduces engine performance and two is to prevent carbon buildup by reason of recirculated exhaust gas they do that by removing this pipe and using a blanking plate to cover that access points okay now like i've already discussed earlier the egr does not reduce engine performance except only if it fails getting stuck in the open position now if you blank or delete the egr that might prevent carbon build up in your intake but that could also increase the combustion temperature inside your cylinder and when that happens engine knocking is likely to occur and if the knock sensor of your engine senses that the ecu enters into a fail safe mode and the ignition timing is delayed to its maximum retardation until you turn off the engine and when that happens when the ignition timing is delayed the engine performs poorly so instead of your initial goal to improve performance you might just do the opposite and in addition because you blank this out you bring back again pumping losses as i discussed earlier affecting your fuel economy so as far as i'm concerned if there's something wrong with the egr system i might as well fix or clean it rather than blank or delete it remember modern engines are designed to work with the ecu and this ecu is programmed to operate with an egr and should you blank the egr the ecu which is essentially the brain of your engine doesn't know you did that and it's going to continue to operate the way it was programmed to but because you blank the egr that might affect the performance of your engine now before i'll end this video i would just like to make this clear okay i'm not saying that you should not delete the egr if you want to delete it fine if you do not want to delete it fine it's up to you it's your engine it's your prerogative i'm not here to debate with you my main goal here is to explain as comprehensively as possible what the egr is all about so if you want to learn more i would like to invite you to watch these videos this is a video about the differences between a gas and diesel engine this is about the diesel throttle valve and this is about the pcv because i believe these videos are very much related to this topic so anyway i do believe that's it i hope you like this video i hope you're not bored i hope you found it informative if you do let me know in the comments below like share subscribe if you want to only if you want to and as always, thank you for watching.